Welcome to our White Towel Canucks panel video. Uh, Jensen wanted to talk to you a little bit about Travis Green and his fit with this with this team. We're seeing a bit of an indictment of hockey culture, so to speak. Obviously, the, the Leafs are in town. I don't know if it's if the stuff started with Babcock, and then of course what happened in Calgary with Bill Peters, um, and this mystery in Dallas with Montgomery getting fired. Uh, Travis Green on the younger end of the spectrum when it comes to coaches. How is he handling this young group going forward with this supposed clash of authoritarian old school coaches and new school players? Yeah, well, I, I, you know, I think that you know, the master plan is, you know, we get this guy, we attach him with this young group of players and they, kind of, they grow together. Uh, that, that, that's the plan. And I, I think you could say reasonably say that it, it, it's kind of worked out that way. Now, like the hard questions are coming up for this team and they really have to, you know, quote unquote, be playing meaningful games in that first week in April for this to, to, to be sold. But, you know, I think that's the plan and I, and I think by and large it's worked out. I think what separates Travis Green from some of his peers guys when it comes to working with younger players, he always talks about a partnership. And that can yeah. sound cliche-ish, but, it, but it's true. I mean, his door is open. I had an opportunity to talk to Bo Horvat the other day about, here's another thing on your plate as a captain. You played for the Hunter brothers in London, and they're no day at the mm. beach. I mean, they don't really have a sunny disposition. But this is this kind of paradox that it's in. You talk to a guy like Horvat, he said, I wouldn't be in the NHL today if it wasn't for the Hunter brothers. Because were they hard on me? Absolutely. Did I lose sleep? No. But they got me to another level. But then I sort of pressed him on that. I said, well, now you've got to kind of take the temperature of the room. What's happening in here? What do you see? He says, you know, I'm really lucky. And for starters, a great veteran core group leadership. And he says, it's really great in here. There's nothing going on. I, I don't know of anything. I don't sense anything. He says, there's no white noise in the Canuck room. And trust me, when you cover a team for a couple of decades, you can kind of smell yeah. trouble. And there has been trouble here in the past. He said, I'm very lucky. So maybe the Canucks are in that uh, realm of, of franchises where they actually have a really good line of communication from the guy behind the bench to the guys on the bench and in the room. Yeah, I think the other thing with Travis is you can see he's still got his eye on the developmental ball. Now it's not mm -hmm. quite, you know, two, three years ago we always talked ad nauseum about them trying to serve two masters, yeah. you know, develop players while staying competitive. But you can see... In Did a they do that, by the way? Uh-huh. <laughs> Did they do that? <laughs> that didn't quite work out as the way they One planned. Master but, you know, there. in an earlier segment, ben, ben made a point about, you know, feeding, uh, matching uh, Elias Peterson up against the Leafs' top line with, with, with Matthews. And you can see that he spots that in certain, you know, he doesn't live and die with it. Yeah. But he will play Patterson head-to-head -head against the other team's top centers. In the NHL uh, these days, there's some, every team has that guy. But for this team to get to the level they want to, they have to be able to be comfortable playing Patterson against the other, Patterson's line against the other team's best. So he's just started to introduce that. And also, it'll be curious to see if, you know, if, if that magnifies as we go on this season. Travis talks a lot about teaching points. I mean, you can talk to your blue in the face. You go through something like what happened in Pittsburgh, the deer in the headlights. It's 6-3. Pittsburgh makes it 6-4. I know I got to change my lead because the kids were just, it's one of those nights yeah. okay. where, you know, Malkin was, was moved, uh, the spirit moved Malkin to play because Sid wasn't there. He has the five-point game. And the best part of that is the teaching point, the video sessions after, because when the players go through that, and it's another rite of passage. As a coach, Travis talks about teaching points, learning points. Uh, and because, like you said, the team is still relatively in transition. So I think that really helps them having that kind of an outlook that as much as we want to be there and be able to beat anybody in a given night, there's still a process here. Yeah, you're complaining about changing your lead, at least you're in the Eastern time zone, right? <laughs> uh, you can read good ben. lead, though. <laughs> <laughs> you can read Ben and Ed's stuff at VancouverSign.com, thepromise.com. Uh, subscribe to our podcast, watch our videos every week. Thanks, everyone.